Welcome to the Ukraine Wireless YouTube channel. Today we have a lot of updates from the Bakhmut area. On December 2nd, the conflict between Ukraine and Russia reached new heights as the Ukrainian forces reported 67 combat engagements throughout the day. The aggressor Russia unleashed a barrage of attacks, launching two missile strikes, 17 airstrikes and 46 MLRS attacks on Ukrainian positions and various settlements. The toll on Ukrainian troops and civilians was severe with civilian casualties, injuries, and widespread destruction of private residential buildings and other civilian infrastructure. In a disturbing turn of events, Ukraine Security Service was accused of orchestrating explosions on two trains along a crucial rail route in eastern Russia earlier in the week. A Ukrainian defense source claimed that the first explosion occurred on Wednesday along the Baikalamu railway as a train passed through the Bisolov Severomysky tunnel in Buryatia. Eastern Siberia. The second attack targeted a retreated train passing over the Devil's Bridge on Thursday. Both incidents were allegedly the result of planted explosive devices causing significant disruption to the Vital Railroad. According to the source, the Ukrainian security service, known as the SBU, executed a special operation to disable the strategic rail route. The first explosion in the Severomiwiski tunnel forced Russian authorities to reroute trains through the Devil's Bridge, providing the perfect opportunity for the SBU to strike again. The source claimed that the implanted explosive devices detonated as the train passed over the bridge, effectively trapping the Russians in the SBU's alleged trap. While Ukraine has not officially claimed responsibility for the attacks, the Ukrainian security service has remained silent on the matter. Independent verification of the explosions is challenging, leaving many questions unanswered regarding the authenticity of the accusations. As the situation unfolded in eastern and southern Ukraine, the operational landscape remained challenging. In the Volin and Polisi axis, there were no significant changes and no signs of an offensive group formation were reported. Meanwhile, certain units of the armed forces of Belarus continued their missions in areas bordering on the Siversheina and Sloboshanshina axis. The adversary, Russia, maintained its military presence in areas bordering Ukraine. Ongoing sabotage and reconnaissance activities, along with shelling from Russian territory, heightened tensions. Russian forces increased the density of minefields along the state border resulting in artillery and mortar fire on around 15 settlements. The Kupsianzaik Axis witnessed enemy assault operations near Sinkivka and Stelmakivka, with Ukrainian defenders successfully repelling nine attacks. The invaders targeted around 10 settlements with artillery and mortar fire, causing significant disruption. In the Lyman Axis, the invaders made assaults in the Syrianske forestry area, where Ukrainian defenders repelled seven attacks, the occupiers targeted approximately 10 settlements, intensifying the conflict in the region. The Bakhmut Axis experienced Russian offensives near Hryorivka, Bodenivka, Ivanivske, Klishchivka, and Andrivka, with Ukrainian defenders successfully repelling 18 attacks. Artillery and mortar fire hit over 15 settlements, further escalating the situation. On the Avdivka Axis, the invaders launched assaults near Novokel in Nove, Stipove, Avdivivka, Severne, and Pervomaiske, but Ukrainian defenders repelled 16 attacks. Russia targeted approximately 10 settlements with artillery and mortar fire, exacerbating tensions in the area. In the Matsinka Axis, the invaders attempted failed assaults with air support near Novomaikelivka. The settlements of Hoster, Marinka, Novomikhailivka, Pobjeda, and Kostyantinivka came under artillery and mortar fire. The Shakhtarsky Axis reported no offensives, but around 10 settlements faced artillery and mortar fire. In the Zaporizhia Axis, Russia made unsuccessful attempts to regain lost ground near Robotin and west of Verbov. Over 20 settlements, including Timirivka, Malinivka, Charivne, Robotine, Stipu, Venkamzenske, experienced artillery and mortar fire. In the Kherson Axis, the Russians fired artillery at the city of Kherson and settlements such as Ivanivka, Novotyainka, Ponyativka, and Antonivka. Ukrainian defense forces held their ground on the left bank of the Dnipro River in the Kherson Oblast, inflicting fire on Russian forces. On the military front, Ukrainian missile troops struck three concentrations of troops, weapons, and military equipment, along with five ammunition depots of the Russian invaders on December 2nd. Meanwhile, Russia downplayed the Wednesday incident involving the trains, 
referring to it as a cargo train fire without explicitly labeling it as an attack or attributing blame to Ukraine. The second incident received no official comment from Russian authorities. Russian telegram channels reported two train fires in the area, with videos circulating showing wagons ablaze along a rail track. The targeted trains were reportedly carrying fuel, and the Ukrainian source claimed that Russia used the railroad for military logistics, emphasizing its importance as the only major connection between Russia and China. After the first explosion, the rail provider stated that it was assessing the extent of the damage and there were no reported casualties. The East Siberian Transport Prosecutor's Office confirmed the absence of casualties in the initial incident and mentioned the coordination of law enforcement and supervisory actions in the affected area. In response to the incidents, Russian authorities pledged to take appropriate measures based on the results of their inspection. Train traffic had been rerouted with a slight increase in travel time following the first incident. The events of December 2nd underscored the intensification of hostilities between Ukraine and Russia, both on the military front and through alleged covert operations. As the conflict continues to evolve, the international community closely watches the developments concerned about the potential for further escalation and the impact on regional stability.